City Skylines 2, a game from which the developers warned that it isn't optimized well yet and they still need to get to the performance level they would like to achieve. Now in this video I would like to have a look at some optimized settings with which I think the game is very playable. And after that we'll have a look at each of those settings and see how they impact the game graphics wise and performance wise. Welcome to Henkes Gaming, guess who I am and let's build this city! Now to be honest, I haven't built a city yet. No, I've built a tiny town according to City Skylines. But this tiny town runs and looks great. In 4K zoomed all the way and we are below 60 FPS quite a bit. But zoomed out, we are somewhere in the 70 FPS. And I think you will play a game like this zoomed out most of the time. Because doing all the city building while being zoomed in is, well, difficult I think. Now this is a tiny town, of course when you have a larger city the game could very well run a bit worse, but with this FPS I think you have a little bit of headroom. By the way, this footage is of my optimized settings running the game. Well let's have a look at what my optimized settings are then and how we get the game running like this. And to have a good look at the optimized settings we quickly switch to the advanced settings. Because those simple settings are for simple people, and we are no simple people, we are advanced people, right? Yes you are, come on admit it, you are advanced. I think you are so advanced. And one of the first things we see is the show all resolutions checkbox. When selected in the resolution list you can select your refresh rate as well as your resolution. Just to throw an unpopular opinion around, perhaps play this game at 30 fps. I think the game is still very playable that way, but I used to be a PlayStation gamer. And then you have plenty of titles that run at 30 fps, so I'm a bit used to it. Leaving it at 60 hz for now. Don't forget to select the V-Sync option to prevent tearing of course. Then set the dynamic resolution scale option to constant. This sets FSR 1.0 at 50%, which is equal to the performance level as far as I know. For anti-aliasing we first select the high SMAA option, but then, and this makes a huge difference in how the game looks I think, we set the anti-aliasing method to TAA, temporal anti-aliasing. This makes the game look much more stable. With the sub-pixel morphological anti-aliasing option the game was shimmering like hell. Like a morphological hell. I'll show you the difference after these settings, so stick around. Cloud quality we leave to high, you could turn off the distant options, you don't lose detail that way, but you also don't win that much FPS with those. Fog quality we leave enabled and volumetric quality we set to low. Disabling fog also disables volumetric light, but I like volumetric light, so low it is. Ambient occlusion. Usually I set this to low in games, but I didn't notice any performance difference, so leaving it at high. We disable global illumination. The effect is so minimal graphically, but it does give a nice FPS win. Reflections we leave at high. I didn't notice that much of a difference in performance with lower settings, but I did play on a European map. Maybe an American style map has more reflections and thus more impact if you lower this setting. But for now, high. Disable depth of field. It gives you a small FPS win and I didn't notice any visual change. Motion blur I left at high, but of course you can turn it lower if you don't like motion blur. Shadow quality we set to low. Visually the difference is barely noticeable, but it does give you a nice boost in FPS. Terrain quality we also set to low. A minimal FPS win, but also a minimal visual impact. Water quality we leave at high. It has no performance win if you turn it lower. Level of detail then. Now this one makes quite a difference. And if you can, I would suggest leaving this too high, but if you want to achieve those higher FPS, as we saw in the beginning in the 70s, you need to turn this to very low I think. If you are going to play at 30 FPS, you could consider setting this to high. You mainly notice the difference at night, but we'll have a look at the setting later on in the video of course. And then the last ones, animation quality and texture quality, which we both leave at high. During testing I did notice that some textures took quite a while to load in, but this was after loading saves right after one another. Just keep it in mind if you think that textures look bad even though the setting is set to high. So those are the settings I would recommend you to use. 
Now if your city gets bigger and you do need to switch things down later on to get the game running fluently, as I said, consider 30 FPS if you don't want to lose any visual quality, or lower your resolution, although I do think a game like this benefits of a higher resolution with all the small details going on. But stick around and we'll have a look at each of those settings and see how they impact the game graphically and performance wise. Now before we have a look at those settings, please leave a like and let me know in the comments down below with what settings you will be playing the game. Thanks, but let's not keep those settings waiting for too long, never know what they might do. Well, the settings then. And let's start with the Anonymous Alcoholics. I mean the anti-aliasing, AA. And this is such a world of difference. When I started the game I thought it looked really bad. It was shimmering all over the place. It was so bad my own house started shimmering. Went to the neighbors, their house started shimmering as well. Now even the best preset doesn't get rid of this shimmering. You need to go to the advanced settings and set the temporal and the aliasing to get rid of the shimmering in your own house, in your neighbor's house and in the game as well. Now it does make the game look a little bit softer I think, but I think this looks so much better. Do this. Even if you don't want to touch any other setting in the game, switch to this AA method. If you really don't want to do it, give me a call. I will come and switch it for you, so your neighbors don't have to live in a shimmering house. Alright, enough about AA. Let's go to level of detail, LOD, and there's a lot to look at here. And we'll start at night, because then you see the differences best. On very low and low you mainly notice that there are lights missing in the city. On very low the graveyard, the school and some flats don't have lights when zoomed out a bit. And on low these have lights, but some flats in the top of the screen don't have lights, until we zoom in a bit more. Medium and high on first sight seem to be the same, but we'll have a look at a moment to see the differences between those, because there are some. Switching from high to very low, you'll get an FPS win of about 30% and each step in between has a win over the previous one in FPS. Medium and high side by side you'll see the same effect, some buildings in the medium panel not having lights until we zoom in further. Now this is a tiny town, having a bigger city the difference in light pop in will probably be bigger as well. Unfortunately I only had so much time to build my city before this video needed to be made. And too bad, but my boss wouldn't allow me to play City Skylines 2 during work hours. I don't get why. If you can choose running Kubernetes clusters or a big city, you would say the big city is the obvious choice. Now sticking with the LOD setting a little bit longer, at night you notice the differences quite well. During daytime a lot less I think. I did see some tree switch detail level, but most of the time it's not that noticeable. The most noticeable thing in my video are the color differences. What's up with that? I think it's a cloud shadow, a volumetric cloud shadow, but more on those later. So let's go to the shadow quality. And first off, at the low level there is that cloud shadow again, sorry about that. Guess the citizens at low just have to bear with a little bit less sunlight. But shadow wise I don't see a lot of difference between the quality levels. And also no differences in the shadow distance or anything. Turning off the shadow is quite a different look and I wouldn't advise doing that. I think it transforms the look of the game too much. But turning off shadows gives you a significant FPS boost of about 31%. I will however run the game with low shadows, gaining an FPS win of about 13% over the high settings. A lot less of a win, but also a lot less visual impact. I would say almost no visual impact. Ok, global illumination. And for this we're going back to college, cause here we have one of the more noticeable examples of the GI. Don't you remember those days you were in college and someone was switching off and on the global illumination settings on your school, changing the light around you? Yes, we are all living in a City Skylines 2 world. You heard it here first at Hank is Gaming. I can see the headlines already. But yes, sorry, GI. Well, the effect is minimal I would say. On high you see that those white bricks are lit a little bit more, but other than that I don't see that much of a change. Between the low and the disabled setting, I don't even see a change I think. Does low maybe have a little bit darker shadows? Well, for that minimal graphical impact between low and disabled, let's go for disabled. Going from the high to disabled setting gives you an improvement of about 18% in FPS. It is switching a bit, but I think it's around that number. 
Well, that's quite an improvement and you lose almost nothing in visual quality. Volumetric lighting up next. And this nice morning shot has that foggy look to it, which I really like. Makes me remember those days I was traveling by train in the morning and seeing the foggy fields. Ah yes, those were the days. Now with the low volumetric setting I can relive those days just as well as I can with the high setting. I don't really see a difference between medium and low, but choosing low for the chance that it might run ever so slightly better than medium. Coming from high to low it improves FPS by about 8%. Well, with almost no graphical impact, that's a nice boost. I wouldn't turn the setting off, because there's almost no FPS win, and you lose the nice effect. Clouds then. We leave this setting too high. Turning off the distant cloud option does pretty much nothing. Turning off the volumetric cloud shadows however does give you a win of about 2% but you lose that nice ground shadow which I like. Turning off clouds altogether gives you another 2% win. If you don't care about those shadows on the ground, turn it off. But I leave it on because I like it. Going to depth of field then. Now in most games this makes the background look a bit blurry, often in conversations and such. Now we have very little conversations in City Skylines 2, only conversations with ourselves. And if we drink enough beer or whiskey while talking to ourselves, we might even have some real life depth of field going on. In the game however, not that much. So I set the depth of field resolution to half resolution just to see if I was missing something. And now the foreground is blurry all of a sudden. That's not what I was expecting from the depth of field. So okay, we should be looking at the building in front to see something happen I guess. But I see no difference at all between high, low or disabled. So, depth of field, disabled. It does give us an FPS win of about 7%, so 7% for no visual impact, that's great. Reflections. Now when I was having a look at some reflections, I also noticed that my texture details were sometimes loading in after quite a long time. So keep that in mind, when loading a save, your textures might take a while to load in. But reflections themselves. Now I followed this bus around for a bit, but because the buses in the different panel settings drive differently, it's a bit harder to measure the exact difference in FPS. However, I think it doesn't really matter what the reflection setting is set to, frame rate wise that is. So I would leave it at high, because graphic wise it certainly does matter. On high the reflections look a lot better than on medium, on low I only see the mirror reflected, and with off of course no reflections at all. Now because I use a European map, buildings don't have that much reflections, because buildings are made of stone. Maybe if you're playing on an American map, flats have more reflective surfaces, or windows a normal person would like to say. And this setting has more impact. Keep that in mind. And also I found this funny, the bus drove over the roundabout but at such high speed that its wheels came off the ground. Look at it go, I wanna ride that bus, that's wild. But terrain quality up next. And here we have high, medium and low. And I see no real difference between those graphics wise, so with a small FPS win of about 4% from high, we choose low. For this setting also, perhaps if you play on a different map with lots of mountains and such you may see more difference, but on a flat map, use low. Water then. Other than the color, I saw no difference in setting water to a lower quality. Not in FPS, not in the water itself to be honest, so keeping it too high. And that's it for the settings. Which brings us to our optimized settings again. And I just wanted to show you real quick the differences between the high global quality setting and our optimized settings. And by the way, this footage of our optimized settings is with the LOD set to high. With that set to high, you see we don't achieve 60 FPS. But what a difference that anti-aliasing makes. It's incredible. And last but not least, 30 FPS. I know you hate it, but I would say Consider it. The developers said they don't see a need for more than 30 FPS. Now I do think gameplay above 30 FPS, even in a game like this, is nice. Because everything is just a bit more fluent. But I also think they have a point. 30 FPS really plays okay in a game like this. So you should consider it, I think. Mainly because you can probably play the game with higher settings. I would rather play at 30 FPS with more fidelity than at 60 FPS with less fidelity. 
but that shouldn't be an excuse for Paradox to not patch the game and improve performance of course. Well now, seeing how much support, updates, DLC and other stuff City Skylines 1 received, I am not worried that this game will run great at some point in time. Let's just hope that that point in time is sooner rather than later. Well, those settings should keep your citizens happy and content and get you to your next megalopolis. Well, thank you for watching and consider subscribing to my channel. In two weeks I'll be back with a look at the June DLC for Flight Simulator, see how that performs. If it isn't postponed, if it is postponed, because the movie is, then I'll make a video about something else and I have no clue what it will be about. Have you played Lives of P yet? If not, have a look at this video. And otherwise, I hope to see you again in two weeks. How do? There's a bomb on a bus. Once the bus goes 50 miles an hour, the bomb is armed. If it drops below 50, it blows up. What do you do? What do you do? Now.